Because if I do that, it's going to look like I'm really fast if it slows it down. How much is erratics? I'm back! <laughs> hey, <Right>. sports fans! <laughs> I haven't even said anything yet. Right, let me just. Okay. And cut. Right. Hey, everybody! This is Andy at Forest Dean Manor. Out in the beautiful Forest Dean today. What shoe are we testing? The Dynablast. Yes. He doesn't we... like them because they've got too big a drop. They've actually just bought car. And what, what test are we doing? Long running speed test today. There we go. Out in the woods with me, who's a slow ultra runner. So I'm going to be puffing and panting to keep up with that joke. It's going to be a good day. And he's got his cap on backwards for his business. He said it best. So we're out here on the long run test, first of all. As James said it best, we're doing both today, the long run and the speed test. The goal today is simply 90 minutes. And with the training that I've got coming up, the 10K training, which I did a video on, I'm not really going to be using these shoes for any form of speed test and long run test. So I thought I'd combine the two today, get 10 miles or so done uh, on a long run, nice and steady, feeling it now in the 140s heart rate, so that's perfect. We'll sit there and then the last couple of miles I'll kick on and see how they feel and the speed side of it. So first and foremost, we'll do the long run. And when that's done, we'll touch base and we're about to kick on. There we go, just coming up to the end of the long run segment. We've done nine and a bit miles. So we're gonna get to 10, and then we're gonna kick on for two miles for the speed work. It's been a steady effort today. Heart rate has been way too high, but uh, we've topped out 172, which is naughty, because that's like threshold. But uh, it's just been a steady effort, and I've gotta get these steady efforts in to get back fit again. So yeah, solid overall, feeling good kickstart the speed and there we go just like that we're onto the speed so we just about to kick into it just heading down the hill onto the flats solid long effort now to see how these things feel and we pick up the pace two miles and see what we can do There we go. Oh, yeah. Fast two miles done. Me and him. Him and me. Him and me. 605 yeah, pace downhill. And then 617, I think it came up as uphill. And I will say it, that was a wind. So uh, <laughs> overall, really happy. Heart rate was through the roof. But that's just lack of fitness and getting back into it. But that was the run that we needed boys and girls to get back on track. It's for the shoes. They actually felt really good picking up the pace. We'll talk more about that in a second, but on the whole, that was really a worthy run in these shoes. Really, really done well. Not like the first run, we had calf issues. Absolutely fine today, much improved. So there we go, speed test done. Let's go back and talk about it. So there we go, 12 miles done and dusted in the Asics Dynablast. Speed test and long run test done combined. Slightly not as good testing as I'd like to be, but to be perfectly honest with you, I was a little bit hesitant with this shoe if you watch the first impressions. It did give me calf pain. We'll go over all of that if I'm still getting the calf pain uh, at the end, and we'll go through my thoughts on it. So I wanted to kind of do a combined testing, plus the fact that we've got 10K training coming up very, very soon. Lots of short, sharp intervals, and this is not a shoe that I would really want to use for that sort of work. But overall, I'm coming out of today's run very positive about this shoe, much more positive than I was on the first impression. So we'll dive right in to the long run. 
So 10 miles in the end at a relatively steady pace. I think by the time we kicked into the speed work, we were hovering around 7.12 per mile, which was great, exactly where I wanted to be. I love a good steady long run, as you guys know. And uh, yeah, I was concerned with the calf pain. I was concerned how it would feel, and I didn't get any of it, which is really, really positive. I actually took this thing out on Friday for an easy buggy run and felt really positive about it. I didn't get any issues then. I wanted to do a little test during the shoe before I committed to doing a longer run, just to make sure, because if I got calf pain, in the short run I certainly was not I was just going to abandon testing in the shoe and possibly see if I could send it back but positive stuff didn't get anything and today didn't get anything on the long run it was actually rather comfortable there's still the overhanging thing in this shoe of the fact that it's a 12 mil drop it's just excessive it does not need to be there I agree with so many of your comments on the first impressions video 12 mil is excessive 8 to 10 mil is enough we don't need any more and with that 12 mil, you do feel like you get a little bit less cushion in the forefoot. Obviously, you're landing much more midfoot, forefoot. And so by the end of the long run, my feet weren't burning by any shape or form, but I did feel them. Like there was a very dull throbbing in the base of my feet. And I know that I could have probably done 15, 16 miles in them and it's still been okay. But I think any more and I think I would have started to suffer. But on the whole, if you're looking at medium long runs, I, yeah, it was, it was pretty darn good. Comfort levels were really good as well. Obviously, you guys know I love the top of this shoe, the upper, everything. It was really comfy. The heel is very plush, fits lovely in there. And the cushioning, it was ideal. Now moving on to the speed. And I have to say, this thing did really, really well. I even turned around to James at mile, just over mile one. I said, damn, this shoe is actually really good at this sort of pace. I stand by the fact this is not an interval shoe. I would never consider taking this thing out for 200 meter, three, four, five, 600 meter repeats, even kilometer repeats, just... There's better shoes. I have better shoes in my lineup. The Prism, the Speed, I'd use those type of shoes over this thing. But when you're hitting tempo and threshold efforts, longer interval work, I've got to say this actually held up really nicely. And actually, that's kind of where the 12 mil drop came into its own because it really does promote that midfoot, forefoot strike. And actually, again, about a mile and a half in, James said, your heels barely even touching the ground which is really interesting because obviously I'm conscious that there's such a wedge of foam here and it's a 12 mil drop and in my first impressions I said I can feel the heel foam and I don't like it. I was making sure I was leaning forward more and I actually felt like I had quite good form. So I was running quite nicely in this thing at a faster effort. 6.09 per mile on the first mile, 6.17 on the second mile, going a little bit uphill and into the headwind. And to be fair, bar the fact that I was a little bit unfit, this thing did really, really well. So moving on to my final conclusions of this shoe. Have I changed my mind for the first impressions? Now I've got some more mileage into it. What are my overall thoughts? Am I gonna be using it moving forward? And how will I be using this shoe? I think I have changed my mind a little bit. I'm not gonna say it's still not better than an Overblast. It's still disappointing. It just doesn't need to be 12 mil. There's a few that like, I said this in the first impressions, the upper, the up half, I love it. This material, I love it. Cushion here, I love it. It's just what's going on here. It's sad because the flight foam blast in the Nova Blast is just incredible and it blew me away as it did with so many of you, but it just didn't do that in this shoe. And again, it's down to the uh, 12 mil drop because I did actually have confirmation from someone at ASICS that the density uh, of the foam is exactly the same. It's exactly the same compound that's used in this one as it is in the Nova Blast. So it's gotta be the 12 mil drop that makes it feel a little bit different and maybe a little bit less stack in the forefoot. But overall now I've got more runs in it, four, four or five runs to be uh, exact, I'm not 100% sure which one. I've got a better idea as to where this thing is gonna sit in my rotation. Where would I consider using it? Well, first of all, yes, I'll be using it moving forward. It will be going to 100 miles. I feel comfortable in the shoe now. I know where its sweet spot is. For me, shorter long runs up to medium, 14 to 15 miles is good in this shoe, relatively comfortable. I wouldn't take it further than that, but on the whole, I felt good at that level. And to be honest with you, tempo threshold work. If you think about the endorphin lineup, and this is a bit of an exaggeration, but you got the shift, you got the speed, you got the pro. The shift is the equivalent of the Nova Blast. And for me, it's not quite the equivalent of the speed, but this is the lighter version of the Nova Blast. So it is meant, well, from what I can gather, it feels like it's meant to be a little, move a little bit quicker than what you can in the Nova Blast. And I have to agree, in the tempo and threshold zones for longer interval stuff, I felt very comfortable in this shoe. Easy days, yep, yeah, I would consider it for easy days, but if you have the Nova Blast, I'd still pick the Nova Blast over that. 
I just wouldn't choose it for very, very, very long runs and I wouldn't choose it for any short, sharp interval work. ASICs have better shoes for that sort of thing, namely something like the Meta Racer, which I can't test because it don't even do my size. But on the whole, this thing has come out a little bit better than what it did in the first impression. So overall, relatively happy with the shoe, still not blown away by it, but if I was to chuck it into the lineup, I wouldn't hesitate to use it. I would just be very mindful of the 12 mil drop and where I was going to use it, what type of runs I was going to use it for. So there we go. Those are my thoughts on the ASICS Dynablast. Let me know in the comments below if you've done further testing in yours and what you think of it. And of course, where your sweet spot is. And most importantly, what I'd love to know is if you have the Nova Blast and the Dynablast, and you've found a great routine to work them in together. Where are their sweet spots? Let me know in the comments below and it would be great. And of course, if you're relatively new to the channel, if you've missed the last couple of videos, I have managed to pre-order some Hoka Oni Oni Rocket X. So I can't wait to test those. They're going to be in the first week of November. We've pre-ordered them on the Hoka website. So they're going to be coming up as the next shoe that we're going to be reviewing on this channel. But before that, we're going to be away for the rest of this week. Whenever you see this video, I don't know. But we're chilling out. So from that perspective, perspective you might not see this video before the holiday either way if you do see it before the holiday there'll be a bit of radio silence on the channel I hope you appreciate that I'm going to switch off and I'll see you when I'm back a lot more refreshed and ready to deliver you guys a wicked training series for 10k training so that's it for today guys if you enjoyed the video please make sure you give it a like share it with your friends subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and as always I'll see you on the next one until then